Hi everyone, this is LaDonna Briggs from Sweet Potato Pie Nursery, and I am painting on a Lily Marlene head, and this is my raw umber. I'm getting it ready. There's a little bit of mineral spirits in my, I put it in a little container. I pour a little bit in here, so I always have mineral spirits, but then I kind of put thick paint on the side. Try to get that out of my brush. All right, so I've already painted on this head somewhat. I've started painting the hair, and I've got this side pretty much done, and I just have the pattern on in the back and on this side, so I've still got quite a bit to do. No eyebrows yet, and I'm still not quite done with the lips, so I'm just going to work on my hair a little bit. Then I can go back and I can add more detail later to the to the skin tone so this is kind of a bigger brush this is a size one so I'm kind of I'm using probably about half paint and the rest mineral spirits I'm going to use some old sponges to kind of wipe my brush out I usually have a rag or something I can do that with, but I don't have one sitting beside me right now. So I'll just use this old, sometimes I'll just use an old dirty sponge. Can you see that? I'll set that right here. And then I'll just kind of wipe it out, what I don't need. So. I just want this to kind of be light, and I want it to kind of blend. So. I have it I'm putting quite a bit of mineral spirits on here so I'm just getting more of a blended look on top I'm just gonna go over back here and work on my swirl I've got some newer older videos and I have changed my painting just a little bit but you know, not so much that, you know, you still can't follow it and do similar, you know, do what I'm doing. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. But I have changed a little bit probably the way I try to blend a little more than I used to. I think it looks more realistic to blend. So this kind of layer is more of a, a bigger brush and blended. See how that's more of a watercolor look? Where some of my earlier paintings are more of a line and I kind of like it to look more. So I'm following this pattern that I already have on here. And I think one of the mistakes people make when they're painting here is to make sure everyone lines up. Well, I don't. I like to crisscross and I like to have movement in my hair. So you get movement by, see how I'm kind of making that. Even though I'm going a little bit different than what I drew on there, it's similar. This brush also kind of separates. See that? That gives me a little bit of a different line. Sometimes I can paint a couple lines at once. So this is kind of a just blended coat before I put in the detail watercolory looking even though I'm using mineral spirits so I don't know if you can see all that don't be afraid to um, experiment with hair I've gotten pretty quick now where I can do um, a couple doll head you know painting their hair in a day and it's a lot quicker than rooting for me so I, I don't really root anymore I'm kind of envious of people that really root good but I kind of decided this is what I do best and see how I've got some dirty there so I'm gonna take some mineral spirits I hope I didn't bake that in most of it's coming off. There's a little, sometimes I'll scratch. If I 
And then I can go back and add a little color later to that. So sometimes I'll do a little V kind of to kind of make things look like real hair. So remember this is a bigger brush and I'm just this isn't really details. So this is kind of going around, so this is going to come down more. See how I'm painting several hairs at a time with this separated brush? So I'm pretty quick to paint that. You know, I do a lot of rest home dolls, and if you're doing a rest home doll, you can do just a simple pattern like that and not do a whole lot more. You know, if you're just painting like play dolls, that's what I do for nursing homes. And I also do like Lee Middleton dolls, so I don't do as much. Sometimes I'll even paint all the back dark, just solid, and then just paint the sides. That's a lot quicker. So you can see that I'm kind of, you can't really see my paint. I'm dipping, and then I'm kind of getting my brush to hold less paint. I want it to be really watered down. I'm going to go up again there. So see how I'm not really putting the exact same and I'm not making all of these full strokes because I want this to be an illusion of hair. The, you know when you're painting hair you want it to be an illusion and sometimes I'll even go back and this has already been baked but if I put a little bit more color Faintly, it kind of makes it not look as liney and looks more blended. So now I'm going to pick up a smaller brush and do just a little bit more with my number one here. This is an old brush and I really like it. And it's called Dollar Roney R O W N E Y. I don't know where I even got it. I've had it forever, but I really like it. Okay, so I used a little bit more of the tip of it this way and put a little darker line, but this brush really flows nice. I have a few that I must have bought at the same time. I probably got it at Hobby Lobby, but sometimes if you just look up on eBay, you can find the brushes. I also have a lot of brushes from McPherson's that I've bought and that I really, really like. And they actually have a packet that goes with my hair painting tutorial. That, And I will post a link to my hair painting tutorial too if anyone's interested. I do a step-by-step -step guide on hair painting in it and with pictures so that you can kind of stop and look. There's a full hair progression with pictures. So I am ready now for my smaller brush and I'm going to use a zero. These I got from McPherson's. This is a Princeton Select liner, number zero. I don't always paint with the tips of my brushes. Sometimes I paint more with the side and I use, these are, um, Genesis heat set paints and I use raw umber mainly for the dark colors and see how when you put it on in different thicknesses see I'm getting more of my thicker paint here that you get more depth so see how I'm getting more depth now because I'm going with a little darker and sometimes I'll connect I just kind of do this by how I feel like it looks good. But see how I'm constantly kind of doing V's and kind of connecting. And here's a little hollow place here, but then I'll put a few little hairs. And then if you go to this side, I've kind of came down and around. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I put a darker. And I might have to wipe some of this off. In my hair painting tutorial, I kind of start at this edge here because that kind of gives you connect 
connecting places if you start here here and then sometimes I'll start with a little place in the back so that I can kind of connect all my spots together and then with my little swirl here and then sometimes I'll make my top and then I just kind of connect them all together. You don't want to just put random hairs. There has to be a pattern. And sometimes, you know, that's one of the harder things to do is learning how to get a pattern. But once you master it, it's not hard at all. So, you know, remember, don't be intimidated. This is a lot quicker than reading. And I find that I did a few prototypes that I rooted the doll's hair and they actually didn't sell for as much as my painted hair. So I kind of got a little burnt out on spending three weeks trying to root hair. <laughs> so I thought, you know, if I can make as much money uh, painting hair as I can rooting, then why should I root? So I've kind of quit rooting, so I haven't gotten any better at it, which is I kind of want to try it again because I'm seeing some artists that are so awesome. But then, you know, everybody has their style and I'm always happy for people and when they have beautiful dolls because, you know, I feel like God's given me talent to do what I can do and I may not be the best artist, but I sure enjoy it and I'm able to make dolls for my grandkids and I'm able to make dolls for the nursing home so I'm able to share my talent and gifts that God gave me and then I'm able to make money and paint dolls. I was a stay-at-home mom for a lot of years and I raised my three children okay. and then I did was a parent educator for 11 years so I worked in the school district and I did home visits for parents as teachers and I really loved that um, then I decided that I would start making uh, composite not making composition dolls but I started restoring composition dolls and that kind of led to me deciding I wanted to try to reborn. And so about six years ago, I started reborning and some of my first dolls are absolutely disgusting. Like I don't even want anyone to ever see them, but that's the thing, you know, some of my first hair was just so horrible and I thought it looked great, but you know, they still sold, I just didn't, Get as much form so if anybody has one of my original first dolls please don't ever post it <laughs> but anyways i am teasing um but yeah i am kind of embarrassed at some of my first dolls so some of you all that are just beginning don't be try not to be embarrassed if you're not able to do this my first ones were really bad and this is a learning process i just was determined that I was gonna get better. And I probably make close to 100 reborns a year. So I get a lot of practice and that's the thing. I just keep practicing and practicing. I sold um, every doll, I didn't keep any of them. I just sold them and accordingly, you know. Some of my first ones I only sold for a couple hundred dollars but it was enough to get new supplies and to practice some more. So the main thing to do is just keep practicing and you'll get better. So see how I'm kind of blending that in as I go. And I'm kind of staying with the pattern. And let's flip to this side because even though they look kind of different, it's still similar. And if you look from the front and I'll bring how I brought this hair up, I'll try to bring this up equally. I will use a little smaller brush for that. Here's a 05. This is also a brush, a script brush I got from McPherson's. I like this brush. 
And there's another one I use from McPherson's that I love. That is a tiny brush. I have so many brushes. It's ridiculous. But you know how you get your favorites. Somebody told me the other day about nail brushes um, that people use to put fingernails on. And I thought, well, you know, I'll try those. They were poop. They were horrid. Um, so don't waste your money on buying fingernail brushes unless you know something I don't know. Because the ones people sent links to on a doll forum were horrid. And so this is a Reborn FX Mini Script. It's 20 zero, and I love this brush too. This is really good for tiny hairs. It's smaller than 05. I'll show you. So McPherson sells this brush. Um, see how you just get this little tiny. And I just, I don't put much paint with mine. I don't know if you can see. Let me move my thing over. Like, I just get a little, my paint palette looks messy, but see how I'm just getting teensy bits of paint. You probably can't even see this, but this is making really fine lines. I do a lot of crisscrossing on my fine lines because kind of hair looks like that. You know, I was looking at my little granddaughter. She's four. She has wonderful hair. Her ponytail's already thicker than mine, and it's all curly and beautiful. She's just gorgeous. But I was looking at her hair. She has a lot of hair in the front of front that's thinner, and it looks similar to this. So I kind of even look at my grandkids to see I have um, two that are under or right at a year and a six and a four year old and we have a new one on the way. So I have lots of babies to look at. I kind of look at hair designs. We don't have many babies that ever have hair. We have to wait a year for it to come in, but <laughs> okay, so I've, I've switched to my script 05 and I think because that one wasn't quite thick enough for what I need um, I need to build this up so sometimes if I get too much pain I can just kind of work it out and you know kind of See how I'm making more hairs from this initial paint. And I might go back and use my, this is my zero, I think. So a zero seems big compared to these others, but if you kind of just are lightly using it, you can still get a pretty small line and not use a lot of paint. But I kind of want my line thicker right here. See how this is thick here? And then it gets lighter as it goes out. That's how you can make this look more realistic. And that's how even artists, we can come back here with a little blonde, but I'll kind of show you with the dark. See how people put hair around the face. You can come down with this little tiny brush. It's perfect for that. Another thing, you know, when people do the back of the hair, you can put detail in the back of the hair too, just like you do the front. You can do little tiny lines in the back. So even though this isn't really finished, I can come back around with hair that goes down the back of the neck. Like, you know, you know how guys have hair that go down the back of their neck. We don't really see ours because a lot of women have longer hair. But so I kind of just rotate different brushes. You can also make your own brushes. Let me see if I can find one. I make, make them with more than one hair so that I can sometimes paint more than one hair at a time. But see how I'm just kind of building this to look thicker? I kind of am sporadic how I do this. I don't always just finish one side. I bounce around. This definitely needs to be darker over here. So I'm going to really darken this. See how I'm getting almost pure paint you, of course, you have to have some mineral spirits or it's not going to spread. 
And after you get it, you can just keep, you know, get a little more mineral spirits and sometimes work from the paint that's already loaded on your head. Let me turn back around for reference because I kind of like to try to keep them similar. And remember, if I mess up, I can always go back and wipe it off. I did bake before I started painting again, but I probably need to bake here in a little bit because I'm layering quite a bit. And if I mess up, I always stabilize my hand with my pinky. I've got a little paint on the ear. I gotta wipe this. So I find a place on the head that I won't smear the paint. I'm gonna use the ear. So sometimes I have to go back and touch up face paint. So that's why I kind of do that finishing touch at the end. But see, I have a cousin, a first cousin that paints signs um, close around this area. He's a sign painter and he uses a stick to stabilize his hand when he paints. That's one time he helped me paint a sign whenever I was really young. I don't know why I told somebody I would paint a sign for him. I had no clue what I was doing, but he helped me with that. And that was something he, I remember him telling me and I was thinking, why well, that looked really hard to do. But I found whenever I was painting, with my reborns that I always stabilized my finger, you know, my hand with my finger whenever I was painting. I just naturally did it. Because otherwise you're, it's hard, you know, try to just, for me to make, I'll, try, I'll do it with this line. That's really hard for me where I can just really quickly do it. So if you're not used to doing that, you might practice because it really makes you be, it really helps you to paint a lot faster. Okay, so you can kind of tell now how they're starting to even up. And so here's a different, I'm going one direction here and I'm going the other direction here. So, you, I'm going to darken this a little, but then you don't want to just leave your edge dark. You're going to lighten as you go down so this blends in and looks natural. So you don't want to just have dark, and I don't want to just have a line. I need to make sure I always kind of make it be off. So, that might be a little darker than I want, so I'll lighten my... So I'm going to be teaching classes at Rose and the Kansas Doll Show, show in 2021. Since our we were canceled this year, um, I am going to go ahead and teach next year. But I'm going to be teaching a reborn class for just skin tones and at Rose. And you know, oh. I don't. I'm pretty quick with my reborn um, skin tones. I, I've been on some forums and I've heard people say they use like 20 layers and I'm, I just, I think, well, like something must be wrong with me because I don't use 20 layers. I do about probably eight to nine and that, in, you know, that includes, you know, what I do with sponges too. So I've kind of gotten to where I can paint pretty quickly and then, since I'm not rooting, I am able to paint hair pretty quickly. And I always do my best with each doll. Um, but I don't probably take as long as some people do. Which I don't know if that's good or bad. I'm kind of I'm starting to try some different things, you know, and experimenting. I think that's one thing about reborning. You can always change your style a little bit and the way you do things if, you know. So I'm trying some 
different um, skin tones and adding a few more layers than I used to because I used to not even do nine layers. Um, I think maybe that I put my layers on a little thicker is why I do less than some people, but I don't know. I never really talked to anybody about it. Um, I just was reading that and I was just kind of surprised that people spent that much time. But one thing that I don't do too that I think a lot of people do, like they change the skin tone of their kit, or sometimes I just don't do that. If, if the kit's more orange, my baby's just going to be more orange because... But if a kit's too light, you can always darken it, you know. And that's not really hard. So I probably don't do a lot of neutralizing. But I do know how to if I needed to. I just don't really care to. And Okay, so you can kind of see how I'm... changing this direction here. Now this is, I'm gonna do this a little darker here, but yet I just don't want it to look like, I want it to blend. I want it to look like this is natural hair. So I want to make sure this blends. So I'm going to then come up. Sometimes I'll do this kind of quickly and then I can go back and add more detail. starting to look more finished. So I'm going to come back here after a while. I'm going to sign off and well maybe I'll do a little bit on the top of the head because I haven't really showed that to add depth but um, I've already painted quite a lot of little tiny detail in the front with my teeny weeny brushes I showed you. So, but I haven't done a YouTube for a while, so I thought it might be time for me to kind of update because I do things just, like I said, a little bit different. And when I get done painting, sometimes I'll, I'll do a yellow wash just kind of over the hair or a darker brown, you know, kind of lightly so that I kind of highlight the hair or darken the hair, which kind of highlights the front. And whenever I add the eyebrows, then my doll will really come to life. Now, my tutorial does have kind of a step-by-step -step breakdown on how to do eyebrows, too. So, it's kind of helpful if you, and I have a workbook that goes with that, that will help you break down how to put eyebrows on a lot of people struggle with that. I know when I first did, I struggled with eyebrows too. Somebody told me one time that my, on my composition dolls, that everything looked great except my eyebrow. And you know, at first I was kind of disappointed, but then I was really thankful because true criticism is really the only way to get better. And when people just tell you everything looks great and it really doesn't, then you can't get better because you're not really understanding what to change. And I've really been lucky. Um, when I first started, I had some people be honest with me um, and it really did improve my art. So if you can find a true friend or if you're in a doll forum and somebody gives you real advice, not just because they give you advice doesn't mean you have to do it or that they're right, but sometimes it's good to be able to hear what people tell you and you know still today you know I'm thankful for true criticism you know sometimes I'm thinking well gosh I didn't realize that or I didn't I don't see that but but it's still okay to do you know your own style and everybody's different and not everybody is gonna like my dolls and that's okay um, I get that a lot of people like rooted. I love rooted dolls too. I just prefer to not do them because they're hard. <laughs> and you know, I've kind of got to where this is, I really enjoy painting hair. Something I really enjoy. So see how I'm darkening 
this, but yet I'm kind of blending it too. So I've got these darker hairs. You can almost go back, and sometimes I'll even put black in, but right now I'm only using raw umber, so I haven't really used black yet. So sometimes a baby's top of their head has this darker hair, and that's what I'm kind of going for. Darker, 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 and darker kind of on the crown. So this top part will be darker. Isn't she turning out cute? I just love this kit. And at one time I probably bought 20 of them and they're sold out now. So I slowly do them, but they're kind of a big doll. They take a lot of time, um, a lot more time than, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but you know, you have to do the tummy because they're a full, it's a full vinyl kit. So it's definitely more time consuming. And then you have to um, string it and get the ball joint head on. And it's hard to root the eye. you got to stuff the eyes in through this little hole you have to cut. And so it's a little more time consuming even putting her together. But she's so worth it. And just such a beautiful kit. This doll is so realistic when she's put together. She's a crawler. Um, I don't really use, you know, set her up to crawl, but she's cute, like looking up at chairs. I take, I've taken some really cute pictures with her. Um, and McPherson's have um, one that I painted actually on their site that they sold the kit from, but the kit's all sold out now too. But you can still find, find the one I painted. It's the one with painted hair. So anyways, I'm going to quit and I will post pictures of her when she's all done. Um, I'm making this into a YouTube. If you're watching it, you're watching my YouTube. So I will post pictures of her finished. Thank you guys for watching.